In the third episode, we visit the Garden Gnome Emporium, the heroes embark on their first joint journey. After learning that Hades, who they also assume has taken Zeus Master Bolt, is holding his mother captive in the underworld, Percy, Walker Scobell has a newfound sense of resolve. In an effort to get the Bolt back before the gods of Olympus go to war, Percy and his friends find themselves traveling west. A threat with connections to Grover's family materializes, forcing the three strangers to swiftly learn how to cooperate. Percy visits the Oracle to complete his mission as soon as he accepts it. With a great deal of green smoke erupting from the hideous, mummy-like corpse, his mother's horrible boyfriend Gabe, Tim Sharp appears as an apparition. The ghost informs him, you shall go west and face the god who has turned, and you shall find what was stolen and see it safely returned. You shall be betrayed by the one who calls you friend, and fail to save what matters most in the end. Once Percy's mission has been verified, Chiron, Glyn Terman gathers a number of the most suitable applicants from Camp Half-Blood to serve as possible quest partners for Percy. These include Athena's daughter Annabeth, Leah Jeffries, the camp bully Clarice, Dior Goodjohn, and Percy's new buddy Luke, Charlie Bushnell. After years of competition to embark on a mission, Percy picks Annabeth right away. Additionally, he chooses Grover, Arian Simhadri, Chiron's best friend and Satter protector, who is not in Chiron's starting lineup. Percy trusts Grover in spite of the Oracle's warning that a friend will betray him. Percy is also aware that Annabeth would stop at nothing to make sure they finish the task. In Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Luke offers Percy a pair of winged shoes as a present from Luke's father Hermes, Lin-Manuel Miranda before Percy embarks on his first mission. Annabeth places her palm on the mystical tree that keeps monsters out of the camp before heading out. Grover informs Percy that monsters were pursuing Annabeth and Luke when they arrived at camp, along with Talia, the forbidden daughter of Zeus. Talia turned to battle him to buy her allies time, and just as she was ready to perish, Zeus intervened. In order to save Talia's life, he changed her into the tree. Annabeth finds it offensive when Percy makes jokes about the tree. She assures Percy that he is not Talia and that, if he pays attention to her, he could make it through the mission. After leaving Camp Half-Blood's somewhat secure environment, they travel through New York City. Grover teaches Percy that adventures are moments that define the world. They are sacrosanct because they have transformed human culture, built and destroyed empires, and shifted the power dynamics atop Mount Olympus. Even if that mission means foregoing flying to escape Zeus' perilous kingdom or taking a Greyhound bus seat next to a stench-filled restroom. The next scene in Percy Jackson and the Olympians is the bus arriving at a petrol station. Despite Grover and Percy's objections, Annabeth gets some refreshments for the group and instructs them to wait for the bus. She claims that Percy is safer in the stinking bathroom since it will prevent monsters from smelling him. Grover informs Percy that he is most vulnerable since he is descended from one of the big three and that monsters frequently attempt to take advantage of a demigod's biggest vulnerability. In the first scene of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, we see Mrs. Dodds, Electo, Megan Mullally, who Percy dissolved, seated on the bus. Next to her, an unseen Annabeth sits, and the two teasingly discuss their shared past. Electo discloses that she was employed, by Hades, Annabeth surmises, to discreetly and expeditiously retrieve Percy. She will let Grover and her go on their mission without hindrance and wants Annabeth to give up Percy. Unbeknownst to the other travelers, Electo displays her true self. With a swift flick of her dagger, Annabeth disintegrates her, and the three make their getaway into the New Jersey woodlands. Grover takes them along a satyr path that his uncle Ferdinand once traveled. When Percy laments the detour of their journey, Annabeth retorts that adventures aren't meant to be simp. Regardless of Percy's desire, she tells him they must continue and questions what exactly is frightening him. With Grover acting as his protector, Percy looks to Grover to support his suggestion that Annabeth ask Athena for assistance. Retaliating, Annabeth claims that Grover was her protector initially. During their ill-fated trek to Camp Half-Blood with Annabeth, Luke, and Talia, Percy discovers that Grover was the satyr protector. Grover abruptly claims to smell hamburgers, and he follows the alluring aroma to Auntie M's, a restaurant located in the midst of the woods. Realistic-looking stone sculptures are strewn across the grounds of the establishment. However, Annabeth immediately realizes that these are humans who were actually turned to stone rather than just statues. When Electo reappears, she tells Annabeth that she ought to have accepted her offer. 
As Percy releases Riptide, Jessica Parker Kennedy, another woman, enters the frame. She moves toward the three of them through the tangle of statues, her elegantly hatted face hidden. As she gets closer, Grover and Annabeth instantly cover their eyes, and Percy does the same. She welcomes them all to come in and promises to help them work things out. Electo turns away from her as well and declines. Electo won't hurt the three while they're with her, the enigmatic woman claims. She adds that Electo won't go either because doing so would require her to admit that she was unable to apprehend Percy. She then identifies herself as the tragic and renowned Medusa, one of the most infamous and well-known creatures in all of mythology. The group is told by Medusa to either confront Electo or accompany her. Taking into consideration the tales his mother recounted to him about Medusa, Percy opts for the latter. With some hesitation, Annabeth follows. A selection of food is waiting for them at Auntie M's. Because Annabeth is an Athena's daughter, Medusa claims she wouldn't keep a grudge against her, despite Annabeth's claim that engaging with her is distinct from interacting with Percy and Grover. We're not our parents, after all. You and I might have more in common than you think, she says. Medusa declares that she detests bullies and describes herself as a survivor as opposed to a monster. Bullies end up staying longer than they expected when they get to her doorway. She will never be bullied again thanks to the gift from the gods. According to Annabeth, Medusa's mother's treatment of her was a curse rather than a gift. Medusa explains to them that Athena was everything to her, she adored and prayed to the goddess without receiving anything in return. Poseidon showed Medusa some affection one day and declared his love for her. She had never felt more visible than she did at that moment. Athena disciplined Medusa for what she saw to be a humiliation because she felt deceived. No one could ever see Medusa and survive to speak about it, she promised. Annabeth calls her mother's acts reasonable and justifies them. However, Medusa claims that the gods are cruel and that their goal is for humans to think they are perfect in spite of their flaws. After being called a liar by Annabeth, Medusa hides in the kitchen. Grover gets ready to flee as Annabeth tells him to follow Percy. Percy is informed by Medusa that Annabeth will turn on him. She informs him that because Poseidon targeted both of them, she feels a connection to Percy's mother. In order to make sure Percy is successful in saving his mother, she offers to take Percy's pals out of the picture and asks if they would let him save his mother if it gets in the way of the mission. Medusa takes off her cap as Percy runs away. When the three of them find themselves in Auntie M's basement and encounter a sea of statues with horrified expressions on their faces, she checks to make sure Electo is still outside. Grover puts on the winged sneakers Luke gave Percy in order to carry out a scheme, but the shoes take flight and transport Grover away. In the interim, Medusa appears in the basement, her hair covered in snakes hissing and writhing menacingly. She informs Percy that instead of following his dubious father's orders, he had the option to defend his mother. Medusa threatens to transport his and Annabeth's sculptures to Olympus in order to humiliate them. With his eyes closed, Percy faces Medusa while brandishing Riptide. Medusa is distracted as Grover, still struggling to manage the winged shoes, smashes into a nearby statue. Medusa becomes invisible as Annabeth approaches from behind and puts her invisibility helmet on her head. There's a piercing shriek and a hard thump as Percy cuts his sword. Unlike in the first book of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Percy discovers the missing head and takes it outdoors. As Electo dives in to seize Percy, Medusa's severed head is exposed as Percy takes off the hat. Electo suddenly transforms into stone, shatters into several pieces, and smashes onto the earth. The third episode picks up in Medusa's basement, where Grover discovers the statue of his adored uncle Ferdinand, much to his dismay. The group chooses to bury Medusa's head in the basement so that no one else may find it when he has finished grieving. Annabeth criticizes Percy's motivations for agreeing to the journey, bringing up the fact that she shouldn't have had to learn about it from Medusa and confronts him about his mother's survival. Reminding her about Electo's offer on the bus, Percy responds. Grover intervenes and stands up for them both, telling the other that he has been attempting to keep their journey on course without causing any trouble for them. Grover confronts Percy again and queries him about his fears, posing the identical query that Annabeth posed in the forest. Percy acknowledges that the oracle warned him that he would ultimately fail to rescue what really counts and that a friend would betray him. He informs them that he picked Grover for the quest because he believed Grover would always be on his side, no matter what, and that he chose Annabeth because he never envisioned himself being friends with her. 
He claims that he doesn't know who to trust and feels alone right now. With Grover's assistance, Annabeth and Percy acknowledge the offers they accepted and come to the realization that if they remained together, they would never really be alone. Grover informs them that they won't survive any other way. Opposing Grover and Annabeth's desires, Percy comes up with a scheme to transport Medusa's head to Olympus as a sacrifice to the gods. To ensure Annabeth has a memento of her mother with her, he takes off the invisibility cap and returns it to the head. A delivery worker wearing sneakers is shown delivering a parcel inside the Empire State Building in the last minutes of Percy Jackson and the Olympians Episode 3. He enters the elevator and presses the button for the enchanted 600th level. Then, as the camera rises from the box addressed to the gods of Percy, Lin-Manuel Miranda appears as the deity Hermes, grinning and saying, you guys are not gonna believe this, as he exits the elevator. Now that all three of them are in agreement with each other and have delivered a powerful message to the gods, Percy Jackson and the Olympians lay the groundwork for an effective group going ahead with an exciting fourth episode.